Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the GSM's Pride Spotlight. I have a returning guest this week with Colin Schroeder. How are you? I'm doing good. How you been? Good. <laughs> um, so I'm bringing Colin back in because uh, when we first met Colin, he was just a, a new guy. We we're just kind of getting to in, you, getting you to introduce yourself, really. So yeah. uh, how long have you been in now, Colin? Uh, I think it's about five months now. Yeah, how's things yeah. going? Pretty good. Like, I, I like it a lot. You know, it's I see myself, like, steadily, you know, learning new things, like, every day. Like, just getting better, you know, I can just kind of see it, and yeah. I just like the flow. Like, I like everybody here, you know what I mean? Just start, start, starting to click a little bit now. Yeah. What about, sure. um, what about the transition period? Was that a little tough there for a minute when you first came in, didn't really know what you were doing, then you started yeah. slowly coming? Yeah. And it took you a little bit of time to get grasp it, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm definitely not the same as most cases. It takes me a little bit longer to learn yeah. some things, but... I mean, once I get it, I get it. You know what I mean. What was what was one of the things that you struggled with the most? Would you say? I know I know my opinion, but what did you? <laughs> You're gonna let follow the process. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it was more thought. listening to? Yeah, that was. Um, I feel like that was a little big part of it. Yeah. Well, I still sure. have one at home. Why do you think that listening to enable you to get better is is a big part of part of what it is? Well, because I mean, you know, everybody knows. Like, if you whenever, whenever you listen. You learn. You, you can't retain information if you don't listen. And it's just that part of your brain, you, you need to turn it on whether you may be interested in it or not. Like, you, if you need to learn it, you need to learn it. You need, you need to listen. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was just kind of like a big thing for me to kind of overcome. Um, can, you, can you pinpoint a time where you think you started to, you went home and thought, I'm starting to get this now? <laughs> Whenever you hired uh, the, the, uh, Brian, whenever you hired Pablo, I was like, I'm getting fired. <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm, not, not, I'm, I'm getting yelled at. He's about to throw me out. He just hired somebody else new. Like, I need to step it up. So that, that was kind of like my mindset. Yeah. So what you're saying is should just keep hiring people and then you guys will... No. <laughs> no don't do that. No. <laughs> We're good. We got people. Yeah. Well, that, I, just so you know, that was not, not the intention to put anyone's... I, we needed yeah. coverage is what we needed. Yeah. That, that's what... After, like, just not saying anything and just trying to, like, do better, like, I just kind of figured out. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm... I'm going to still be here. Like, I'll, I'll be good. Yeah, you're fine. Um, well, you definitely are improving. I'll give you that. I'll give you the credit where credit's due. Nice. In the beginning there, the first month or so, it was a little shaky because you weren't really getting the grasp of yeah. things. But uh, what, what do you feel is the most important part of your job when you are with a customer for you? What, what is it that really helps you move through the process with the customer? Like, kind of like bringing it back to what you said, like make a friend. You know yeah. what I mean? Like once, because whenever I first meet a customer, like I'm nervous. My, my hands will start, you know, sweating and like my armpits will sweat. And like it, it isn't until like I feel comfortable with them, kind of vice versa with them, I'm sure. You know, like once we feel comfortable with each other, it's gravy from there. Well, I'm glad you said that because that, that's exactly the point. Yeah. Just because you're nervous with a customer, don't think that they're not nervous to meet you right. too. Because not only that, they're more nervous than you because not only now they've got a they're coming in to get something, but you're gonna. They automatically assume you're there to sell them something. Right. You got to break the ice. Yeah. So that's why gaining gaining a friend rather than a sale at the beginning is more important. Yeah. Because then you can both I calm down and get on the same. And then they realize that you're are there just for what they're. You're for, a person. For. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, it it that is a hard thing for a lot of salespeople to understand because they assume <clears throat> that they have to sell all the time, and that's not really the case it is but it's not at the same time it's 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 a healthy balance for sure i mean it's always you know make your friend and then you know explain to them how, just you know try to figure out like the best way like to approach things like once you learn the person yeah and figure out like their hot buttons and things like that what is it that you're most enjoying about the job um the people like the environment if i'm being honest with you because, I mean, like, I haven't sold a bunch of cars yet, like, in a month, I would say. Like, to where, like, you know, I'm the top salesperson for the month. So, like, I can't say it's the money. Um, but, I mean, like, I like everybody here, you know. Like, it, and I feel like that's kind of hard, like, whenever you find places to work. Um, I mean, especially those first three months whenever I first started. Whenever you were doing stuff with us, like, events and stuff. Um, and I'm sure, like, it, that's going to continue. I'm not saying that that's the only time, but... Just like getting everybody together and like everybody knowing each other, like it's it's nice. Like well, let's everybody's touch, nice. Let's touch on that anyway, because that might be something I do later on in the vlogs for sure. Mm -hmm. um, 
What is it about those things that you feel? I know you're <coughs> relatively new to working period because you're still a young guy. Right. But what I know, well, you had one other job before this yeah. one. Right? What about us doing those things? Do you feel that's good for morale and, f and for the team? Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, whenever, like, whenever you took us all out to like eat steaks for the first time, like, and then go into main event, like things like that. Like after I left there, and I'm not even just like saying it to say it. Like I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, like either I got to make it up to them or I got to show them, hey, like you know what you're doing. Like I respect it. Like it's you spent your time and money on us. Like, so like, I'm gonna try to produce for you. Like it makes us work harder for, for you essentially is like what I'm saying. Like, and do, does that make you feel motivation, pr proud yeah. as well to work for, work for oh, this Oh yeah, team? absolutely. Like seeing like what we do and stuff, just getting, and, like obviously those first couple of months, like I really hadn't seen everything. Like it took me probably a couple of months to figure out what everybody's role was, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Um, but like after seeing everything, yeah, for sure. What uh, what what about your future? What's your short term goals for the next, let's say, ninety days? What what are you what are you gonna try and push forward to? Try to at least hit fifteen cars. You want to get fifteen? Mm -hmm. What do you think you need to do to get there? Like the micro steps. Um, I mean, really, just take, taking my work home is a big thing too. Um, like I told you, you know, I wasn't really able to this month, um, but. You know, after I, everything kind of settled at home, like and I was able to like actually start taking leads and paying attention to, you know, drive at home, I definitely saw an improvement. In let me, let me tell you customers. something about what you just said. You, and this is a good thing, by the way, don't take this as a negative thing, but okay. um, I really like, what, what do you mean by micro steps? Micro steps, like I was saying, like take maybe take more leads, um, answer, you know, like try to pick up the phone more, try to pick up more showroom ups. I mean, like those are just obvious, like, oh, how do you plan to sell more? Well, well I plan to do this. Well, like I, I know from goal setting, like in, you know, you going over all that with us that it's much more than that. Like, you know, you got to. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you credit. I, I like that you use that term micro steps. Okay. Um, because. Th that's when you, in my opinion, come to more of a fine tuning your craft mm -hmm. than just doing what you're supposed to, supposed to do. It's kind of like, you know, we always use the analogy of uh, cooking, you know, like baking cakes and whatnot. Right. But that's how those, uh, like, Gordon Ramsay kind of chefs get so good is because they'll tweak some little tiny things. They'll still use the same process, yep. but, they, but they'll add their own little touch to it. And that's what I take from that when you say the micro steps, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And then also, I'll give you another bit of credit too. Um, the fact that you had the balls to come and tell me that you had something going on outside work and that's why it's affecting your job, that's yeah. a big thing because the communication, as you remember from the training the other day, yeah. is huge. And I don't know that unless you tell me. Right. I just assume you're either slacking off or you're not exactly. doing Exactly, and I, I really And I have wonder. no idea. Yeah. And then people come to me and go, well, you know, you're on my case. Well, yeah, but you didn't tell me anything was going on outside. Yeah. I didn't know. How am I supposed to know that? I, I just feel like, I mean, and this is go, always goes without saying, but like honesty is just the best way to approach everything. I mean, like from being like working here and just being honest with you inside the dealership and then also with customers too, like it, it always helps you just being honest. Yeah, Like just absolutely. be upfront and honest. Communication is the key. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I like doing these videos is because then people who watch now, we don't get thousands and thousands of views, they get it, but right. the people that are watching actually get to see the real Colin and the real Jason, mm -hmm. because it's hard when you're out there because they don't get to see those things. Because the only times people get to see you is whenever they're coming in to trying buy to <laughs> buy a car. So they're gonna have their guard up and- Exactly. It'll get what, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about your midterm goals. Like, let's say, what's your, what's your plan for next year or anything? I know we're early, but I'm just curious. So, I mean, it might be too big of a step, but I mean, I kind of look at it like, if you give yourself a year to make ten thousand dollars, you have you, like you'll do it in that. I hope year. you mean in one month, right? No, I, hear me <laughs> out. Hear me out. Hear me out. That's what I was gonna say. If you give yourself a year, yeah, you'll do it in a year. But if you give yourself a month to make ten thousand dollars, you're gonna do it. Like you just have to kind of push for that. So, like my goal next year, I mean, maybe start like working towards like. Of course, honing my craft, like being good at sales and stuff, but like definitely try like to move up at some point. Like maybe not next year, because like I've only been doing this for how long? You yeah. know, and I'm still young. 
But it's like if I get the ball rolling on that early and start learning these things that I need to learn to move up early, then, yeah. Well, something you, you said there that um, has always been something that's really stuck with me. Don't think that your age has any hindrance on your career. You, you know that, right? I mean, see, I do because you guys tell me all the time, but like sometimes, like, I don't Just know. Just because we state that you're still young, what, what we necessarily mean by that is not always your age, you're young to the business. Yeah. But don't think that's a hindrance. You know, experience does not come with age, right? Well, time. Not necessarily. Let's say, for instance, I can experience the same amount of stuff that you experience, but in a shorter space of time. What's that change my experience level? I guess, yeah, like, you would be more experienced than I would be. It's the same thing. You know, that's, I, was, I got to be a manager at 27 years old. Wow. When did you start? 20. I'm 38 now. I'm the general manager at 38. Do you think t time and age has anything to do with that? I think dedication has to do with that. That's my point. Is yeah. You don't necessarily, it's not time served. It really isn't. Never has been. Especially for me. Some people think it's time served, but it's not. Hmm. Just because you've been here for 20 years and have 20 years experience doesn't give you the right to get promoted or go step up. Right. It, there's all the stuff, in, the ingredients in between there. And just because, uh, let's put it this way. I bet I've experienced m more countries than most people out there. Right. That just means I'm more experienced in that specific area. Okay. Just because they're older than me doesn't mean that they automatically know more about Europe. Right, right. Does it? <laughs> because you live there. <laughs> you see what yeah. I'm saying? But that's yeah. my point. I'm not trying to boast. I'm just giving you an example. Yeah. Don't, don't think that necessarily being young is a hindrance to you. It, just, it really means it, it's just really is more your dedication, what you're willing to learn, and what you are actually. Think about what you're saying is experience. What is experience? Experience is just experience in things, right? Yeah. Well, if you experience a lot of things in a short space of time, that's still, as long as you retain that experience, that the 20-year veteran guy yeah. might not have experienced some of that stuff. in, the, in Like that. just trying to talk to as many customers as exactly. I possibly can, just getting that experience. So I'm in. giving you a little bit of advice. Don't think just because you're young doesn't mean you can't go further quick. You can. It just depends how much you want to get it. Mm-hmm. I want it. <laughs> that's all it is. We'll look back on this in a few months. I Anything else you want to add? I got new shoes. I got the selling shoes. He got Carl Hans, by the way. He uh, he used to. I used to give him a little bit of uh, stick for wearing uh, Tommy Hilfiger for a while. So he actually stepped up to the plate and yeah. got some nice shoes. <laughs> Standards. <laughs> now we just got to change your. Uh, um, change what? You can't know. Pants and your shirt. This is. Th these are good brands. Yeah, you can't tell me otherwise. Calvin Klein was good back in the like nineties. I give you that. Yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll let the viewers decide. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. If you are watching, I want, I want, here's a little bit of a poll if you are watching. Is Calvin Klein the, the brand that it used to be? Is Tommy Hilfiger the brand that it used to be? Yeah. It certainly was never a brand, in my opinion, to young, younger people for sure, ever. Bold. Um, but uh, are there, let's, Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, <laughs> uh, let's have a poll in the comments. Are, yeah. they, are they the brands they used to be? Are they the brands that they used to be, or are they good brands? Well, they're obviously good brands, but because whether they're fashionable and in style for your age group is a totally different situation. They are. They totally are. The 90s are coming back, Jay. <laughs> the 90s are back. Tommy Hilfiger was big in the 90s. It was. <laughs> but then they shifted to staying with the 90s people, and then it become older Tell people. The 90s but like. Back. <laughs> they make I don't know. Let me, let me tell you this, and I, I promise you I don't mean this in any disrespect. I've seen a lot of 80s porn style tashes lately. <laughs> Look, there's a, lot, there's a lot of 80s and a lot of 90s. There's, there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's like, a lot of early I'm 90s I'm serious. TV Everywhere I'm looking, you got the old, old oh, school, yeah. like, you know, 80s porn tash. I'm sitting there going, who was bringing that back? <laughs> the mullet's back, man. Every oh, the mullet's well and crazy. The mullet's been back. <laughs> That's it. We're going to get you to grow out a mullet. Keep with the times. If I sell 22 cars next month, you have to grow out a mullet. Me? Yeah. No way. Oh, if I sell 22 cars? With the side shave and then yeah. all the way back. Oh, my God. It'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
Honestly, I take that bet. He'll never get to twenty, so I'll take, I'll take that bet all day. Um, and let's make it even better. If, if uh, so, you, this is on camera, okay? Okay. If you break thirty, listen, thirty okay. before the end of the year, I will grow a mullet for an entire year. You will. Yeah. Like actually. Shake on it right now. Shake on it. If I break thirty, I'll get a mullet for an entire year. They heard it. You can't. You can't crop this out. Never cheered for someone harder than I'm. Just, Zach. I never flipped on someone. Hey, you can't crop that out. Thirty in one month. I'll do it for a year. I'll keep it for a year. You have to sell thirty here, though. You <laughs> can't be somewhere else. Yeah. By the way, if he gets twenty nine, I might fire. <laughs> I'm, oh, kidding. I'm kidding. They, they saw it. All right, all right. 30. You that's your goal. You, you can't crop that out, Zach. You got to leave I it in. I promise you that'll be in there. You can <laughs> watch it. All right. It'll be in there. The handshake and everything. Let's do it. 30, I'll grow up on it and I keep it for a year. I'm going to have, I'm going to get a picture framed of me and you shaking hands. <laughs> and then right next to and it, I'm going to have a picture. Right <laughs> no, right next to it, I'm going to have a picture of you with a mullet. And then okay. that's going to be. Hey, yep. if you do 30, that'll be a killer month and I'll be proud of you for doing it. All right. All right. Now I got to go. Well, you heard it. Now you gotta go. Yeah. But you've got by the end of the year. So what have you got? Nine months left. Yeah. It's a I have all year. Okay. You're in trouble, man. You got to do one month. Not uh, not thirty throughout the whole year. Three months. Well, as always, you heard heard this one. This was a fun one. <laughs> as always, every loose use forward, you can all, you can replace the car, not the customer. But one thing I can do is replace car if it gets to twenty nine. <laughs> So if you get to 29, I can't replace you. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I'll see you all next week. <laughs> Business in the front, party in the back. Kentucky waterfall, Mississippi mud flat. That denim down, Hiller, Tennessee top hat. Missouri compromise, I got that shorty long.